In this InVivo 10 demonstration, we're going to show how to import a picture source and how to code that source. So the first thing we're going to do is to make a folder to specifically hold our picture sources. And in this case, I've already made that folder under the internals main source folder and called it journals. So we're going to import some pictures that go with the surveys that we've analyzed in previous days. And we go to the external data tab, but this time we choose pictures. We'll browse for the pictures, just like we did before, and this time I'm going to import pictures from Kalia. And Kalia is one of the, the children that we analyzed the other day with regard to her family survey entry. So I'm going to import all four of the pictures that show images of her journal entries by clicking and holding on the Shift key. I'm going to import them all at once. And I think I have the journal folder clicked. If so, they should go right in there. If not, we'll move them after. They, they finish importing. We can see that happening down below here. Okay, they went right into the journal folder. And one of the things that happens here, you have to really pay attention to how your files are named. In this case, we just have the numbers that were generated by the digital camera. And I suspect that that's going to be a problem since I have more than 200 children in, in this data set, in that some of the cameras may have generated the same numbers and I'll have trouble importing them. In addition, it's very hard to decide what kind of source you have there with just a number like that. So one of the things I think that I'm going to need to do is to rename these sources so that the child's name is at the beginning of the file name. And to do that, I can just highlight the source and right click on it and come down to picture properties, and just like we did um, when we were naming nodes and use the node properties or attribute properties, here we can rename. So I'm just going to put Kalia, Kalia's name before the number so that we have a unique identifier. And I can, I'll come back and do that for all of them, but for, for our purposes I'll, I'll just work with this one at the moment. So in order to look at this source, I'm going to double click on it, and now we see it here in list view. One of the things you notice is that it needs to be rotated so that, so that it's in, instead of landscape, that it's in portrait view. And to do that, we're going to click to edit, which I can do right here at the, top of, um, at the top of list view, or I can also click the little blue pencil at the top right of this bar right here. Either one will work for me. Once I am in edit mode, then I can use the ribbon at the top of the page to rotate it 90 degrees to the right, and we'll be able to see it much better. Our job now is to do some coding with, of this picture image, and I've already created some of the nodes that I thought we would need, but of course we can also create more nodes as we go along. One of the kinds of nodes I knew we would need is the name of the book that the family is responding to. So I've created a book node and then a, set of, a child node for each of the books that the families received in the backpacks. I see that this one is from the book Reflections. So in order to code it to the Reflections node, in order to highlight it, I drag the selection rectangle. And then all I need to do is to drag and drop it onto the node that I want to code to. And in this case, it's the Reflections node. I'll do a little bit more coding here. Um, I've also created some nodes that, that start to describe the kinds of things that children or adults draw. And in this case, we see that the, that the parent has labeled person at the concert, which is one of, one of the images that is in the reflection book. And so I'm going to drag, I'm going to drag um, my selection rectangle, make it a little smaller here, so that it just shows the person the child has drawn. And I'm going to code that to the node, which is at Draw Characters. Another thing that I want to code about these journal entries is who created them. In this case, it was created by both a child and an adult together. So I'm going to code the entire image to the uh, um, journal author uh, parent node. And underneath it, I've got adult and child. That seems to describe this entry, so I'm going to code there. And I can continue to code a variety of different things about this journal entry. And you can do it very quickly because you can see all the nodes just to your left. One other kind of thing that I want you to know how to do with picture sources is to create a picture log, which you see over here at the right. And there are two different columns, one for region and the other for content. 
region just gives the coordinates for the portion of the picture that you're actually describing with the content. So in this case, I think I will um, I will squeeze my my selection rectangle down so that it just has the child's picture, and I'm going I'm going to write. Uh, I want to be able to write about that. In order, to, in order to ask in vivo to create the regions here, what we want to do is we want to put our, our cursor in the region. We want to right click and say insert row. And it, it creates a row below, but it also inserts the region here, the coordinates for the, for the region that we are coding. So in the content section, I'm going to say child draws a picture of a person and a kite. Now, the log is interesting because it allows, us, allows you to write comments about the, the picture image. It, you could describe it, you could write other sorts of comments, you could write uh, theoretical notes there about it or, or methodological notes if you wanted to and label those. If you want to code those to a node, uh, you can actually click and, and highlight the content and then you can just drag and drop that to any node that you'd like to to code to. In this case, I'll, I'll put draws characters again. And once I've done that, it creates a shadow code for the region that's associated with the content. So when I code the text, it also codes the image. Or I could do that vice versa. Had I decided to drag and drop this section of the image, it would have also coded the content that's in the picture log.